it is that time once again for the Freakers Ball right here live on com on this Friday night, October 23rd, 2020. Uh, so welcome to everybody out there that's tuned in this evening so far. We get people tuning in, tuning out. You know, it's a three-hour show, so a lot of people come and go. Uh, during the show. So anyway, welcome to everybody here. We're live on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page. Also for the video portion, uh, Vaughn.live slash RealLibertyMedia. The audio stream primarily goes through RLMRadio.xyz, uh, but also other places. So uh, welcome to anybody out there tuned in from any of those other places. And welcome to everybody here in the chat this evening. I hope you're all doing well. And by the way, uh, in order to get into the ball here tonight, I'm going to have to see your Kobe pass. Can I see your Kobe pass? <laughs> Just kidding. I would never I would never ask for something such like that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right. Moose Girl will be here shortly. And uh, so anyway, let me see. Um, I said hi and howdy to all those folks out there. Let me say hi and howdy to the folks I see here in the chat that are chatting and some of those that aren't, that I don't see chatting just because I, I wants to. Uh, but I see, I see, I see here chatting. I see Miss Kate and Miss Moose Girl both chatting with Chloe and the Cowboy Tech, Miss Damn Van Meter. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I see Frumpy, and uh, I imagine, I, I, I seen Rome's earlier, I'm not sure if he's still hanging around. The Rob Works and the uh, Mighty Bubbler, the Mighty Bubbler! Yeah, so uh, all those folks, and I just rebooted recently, so I, I don't get to see that many people who are chatting, but um, I, I see Hansel was out there chatting, Meister Brow and the Critters of the Southwest Desert Zone. Uh, beetle, 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 Beetle. Beetle Mania? Yeah, there's Beetle. Oh, he left. He went to, he went to bed. Okay. Good night, Beetle. <laughs> I don't know who all else is in here chatting actively, uh, but we do have other people in here. The famous M. Yes, so famous. Um, yeah, she, she is. She is. Uh, but we got we got others that may be around the anti anti. Uh, Whatever. Um, <laughs> Flash probably asleep by now. Frumpy already mentioned him. He was here as, as a two, as a two. Yeah, the rodent warrior. That's good, Kate. I like that. Um, <laughs> Java Doctor and uh, JJ's and Meister. Meister. I mentioned Meister. Woody. Woodman. Prince. Oh, Prince. I don't even know if I should mention this, but let, let me just say this about that. In case you were unaware, the power hour no longer exists. There will be something else. It'll be different. So just stick around for news about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we got uh, we got Rome's, we got Rob, we got the the Vanna White and Weatherdork Botolas. My good bots over there, sitting over there on my my Linux mint machine. Uh, Linux, Linux. What's your preference? Um, but, well, although we have had no sock puppet for a long time, we still have the cyborg noodle. Yeah, we do. Um, so however that works, I don't know. Uh, there's a bunch of other folks in here too. Uh, Kiss, Matt WJ, uh, the holiest Roger, which may be involved in that new show that I was talking about with Prince. So, uh, yeah, so th those are coming along. Let's see, any other news, RLM-related news? Oh, yeah, 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 last Friday's, last Friday's uh, Freakers Ball Show um, posted up on, I posted it up on, over there on the freaking YouTubes, and they summarily removed it from their YouTubes. And now, I, I think it was probably some of the hashtags that I used, they they weren't probably in favor of some of the hashtags I use, like for example, there is no virus, or the one that really kind of got to me, or that that made me chuckle that they mm -hmm. removed the video with the hashtag blatant censorship. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, you don't like blatant censorship being listed up there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that, 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 was, that 
was that was kind of humorous. Hey, regardless, cool. regardless, nobody, nobody. I mean, we get like ten, fifteen views per yeah. week on YouTube, and we got two hundred or something over on 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 uh, Bitshoot. So oh, okay, okay. I, I, I mean, I only put them up there on YouTube for those people that I mean, we do have a bunch of followers over there. Um, uh, you know, whatever, 700 mm-hmm. or whatever. But we're getting more and more followers every day on BitChute, too. So we're up over, I think, 330, 340, somewhere in that range. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so we, we get, we get uh, you know, a lot more views over there on BitChute. I don't know how many people actually watch through the thing. Um, but, right. But, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, YouTube removed last last Friday's uh, Freakers, Freakers Ball vid. They, they, they didn't. Uh, they were, they were, and, and I appealed on that uh, removal takedown as well. And uh, within minutes of me appealing, it's like mm-hmm. they they had already decided, no way in hell this video stayed up here, uh, because within minutes they sent me back a thing saying, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> your appeal is <laughs> your your appeal is no good to us. We don't care. <laughs> it's not going back <laughs> up. Uh, you have spoken out against the Fouch. <laughs> How dare you? I know, I know. <laughs> well, you know. What are you thinking, Graham? I, well, see, the thing is. Well, what are we thinking? I don't know. If, if they had ever taken the time to listen to any of the Freakers Ball shows, going back to the beginning of posting them up over there, every single one would have been removed because. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's the stuff we talk about uh, is uh, yeah. not to their liking. Uh, so they they don't listen through the videos, obviously, for uh, or or have them scanned for keywords and phrases. They only have yeah. them scanned for like music violations and such. Uh, but, which oh which oh by the way, a couple weeks ago there was a I was playing some one one of Van Halen songs. Mm-hmm. I forget might have been Jump. Yeah, might have been Jump. Uh, anyway. At the end of it, I mean, I I had like three, four seconds of the song in there, and and they yeah. sent they sent out a copyright thing, not not a strike, oh, no. not not a copyright strike, but a thing saying this other person claims ownership of your video because I was like I don't freaking care. It's not like I try to monetize. <laughs> I don't monetize YouTube anyway. You could copyright right. strike everyone you want. Uh, I mean, not strike, but you know, claim. Um, so right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, uh, that's funny, Dan. Well, I know we're not alone in the YouTube cens- censorship. Oh, department. not 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 even close. We talked all about yeah. that last week. Yeah, which, which is why so. that which is why that hashtag was on there. Um, right. <laughs> the blatant yeah. the blatant censorship hashtag was on there, but uh, but I think <laughs> it was it was probably there is no virus hashtag that got to them because uh, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, yeah, you know how they are. <laughs> yep, I do. <laughs> Hmm. Yes, I do. All right. Anyway, what you got? Uh, I, um, no, I was just do, doing introductions and okay. saying hi and howdy. I don't have anything as yet. Um, All right. I mean, I got plenty of stuff, but I'm not ready to do it yet. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, if, if you want to update about my arm, shoulder, wrist thing. Mm-hmm. It's still fucked. <laughs> Is it? It's it's, fucked. Actually, it, it feels a little bit better now, but what I've found uh, over the last week or so is that mm-hmm. um, if I get in a tub of hot water and soak that shoulder, which is difficult for me to do because it's a tiny little tub and I'm not a tiny little person. Um, right. But it immediately, as soon as I get in there, boom, it feels better. It feels amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I ordered this thing on Amazon, and hopefully it'll do the trick. Um, it's a thing that goes over your shoulder and around your arm, and it, it has heat and vibration. Okay, and, uh, good. And it, and and um, yeah, it is good. And, and uh, let me let me see if I pull the link up here. Uh, the do thing you is, have it I, yet or I, not? I, I I do no no it'll come in Tuesday or Monday I think. Oh okay. Um, but uh, when when I went to order it when I placed it in my cart it was like forty two dollars or something right, and then when I put it in there it said twenty bucks. Oh, okay, I'm like, what, cool. What the hell is that? Apparently, they have something called a lightning deal that pops up in, on Amazon from time to time. Oh, okay. So if you do that, then you got like 10 minutes or something to order it. Um, oh, okay. Once you put it in your cart. Um, 
But uh, it looks like a pretty good deal. Uh, nobody that I saw that um, was um, was using it for uh, um, what do you call it um, for for a, for a carpal tunnel type thing. But and I, you know, I'm not really absolutely totally convinced it's carpal tunnel because it, I mean, my shoulder and my and my uh, my back, the upper my my shoulder blade there, mm-hmm. uh, and the and the and the upper part, portions of my arm. Um, those really hurt. Uh, those hurt far more than the wrist hurts, but, but it still is affecting the okay. finger, the fingers, you know? So, right, right. um, anyway, there's the thing there, there's a link to the thing if people want to take a look at it, but, uh, um, I mean, it's it, all connected. It's even all in the human body. connected. Yep, yeah. Even yeah. in the human body. <laughs> a- absolutely. So, um, yeah. And it, you know, it could be a pinched nerve. <laughs> It could be. It could, it could be. I, I mean, I'm, I'm no freaking doctor, and if I was, I'd have to ignore myself because I don't listen to them guys. Um. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway, anyway, have a look at that thing. It looks pretty cool. Uh, we'll, yeah, it we'll, does. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, yeah, I was, I was surprised. Like, yeah, it's like fifty bucks now. Um, oh yeah, I see yeah. that. Yeah, so, wow. Like I, said, I got it for twenty bucks. It was nineteen, oh, that's a good nineteen deal. something. Yeah, yeah. So whatever. So if you ever get a uh-huh. lightning deal thing, you know, uh, which I I don't I don't I don't even know how you tell because it, I didn't see the lightning deal before I put it in the cart. <laughs> right, well maybe it's just I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so it's an automatic thing probably. I, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Anyway, I, I, that was cool. Saved me some money. Um, well, yeah, that's always a good thing. Oh, oh you, yeah. She okay. She saw it. Okay. 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 Maybe it's just for a brief period of time. And I hit hit it at the right time. I I yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Double as a whole. Yes, I am Borg. Oh, not I am Borg. <laughs> no, not not I. We are Borg. Yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is no I in Borg. Um, <laughs> okay, lightning deal. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm not interested cool. in your costume, smartass. <laughs> yeah, we are aging. Well, everybody's aging, Frumpy. You know, from the moment yeah, you're, it's a fact of life. you know, from the moment you're conceived until uh, uh, the, the moment you start to rot, you're aging. Yeah, <laughs> I guess rotting is still aging, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. I guess. <laughs> hey, Ben! Wow. Hey, Ben. <laughs> so yeah, um, not much going on here. Just um, same old, same old, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been oh. like um, eighty, around eighty, eighty plus throughout the week. But today mm-hmm. it barely, it didn't even get to sixty, and it's supposed to be uh, continuing cold, cold, colder, and it's supposed to get a bunch of snow on Monday. So. Oh, fun! We already had eight to nine inches on Monday. Yeah, well, well we it's almost all melted now, but we, it, we had it, we it had that sucked. yeah we had that one little bit of snow a few weeks back, but 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 it's been real hot since then you know unseasonably warm as they say, um, uh, but that that's gone that's going away yeah fall has fell <laughs> yes yeah I was, I was gonna um, go out I was gonna go out and in, uh, in uh, mow the uh, the lawn the grass out there and yeah. uh, it's all dead it's all dead. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, would man, it's uh, it's tough, would you? You know, I and you know this shoulder that that this is on this right shoulder of mine. Um, yeah, I always had a problem with it when I was when I was four years old. I broke both of my collarbones at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, and um, yep. and since then, I I mean the arm, you know, it's always worked fine, except for. Like if I try to throw a, fo- a baseball or a football, it, right, right. It, it doesn't go straight. It seems like it's going straight. I got my aim right, <laughs> and uh, I found I could kind of adjust for it, but I wasn't really that much into throwing baseballs. I like to throw footballs, but um, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So whenever I would throw it, it would like wonk out to the side, right at right at the yeah. release, you know, because I, I could feel it in my shoulder every time, like a little click, click. Um, so that shoulder's always been kind of messed up anyway. And, uh, so, right. 
And now after all, throw underhand. What is this? <laughs> I ain't playing no girl softball. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, it yeah, could, no, it, um, it could be ahead. after all these decades that it's, it's, uh, rearing its ugly head again. Yeah. Catching up to you, you know, whatever. So yeah, it was brutal though. The snowstorm. Yeah. Like death and destruction, dude. Yeah. Okay, I'm not kidding you. Like you had, you had people death? died. It was like wow. People, what? Wow, people died. Yeah, people died. Yeah, right there they're in, driving in Eau Claire. Well, Dunn County, which is right next to Eau Claire. Oh, okay, okay. And then in other areas, yeah. I mean, people just they think they can drive normal when it's snowing to beat all hell out it, it, you can't no, you, well you can until you, you need, can but and, until then you you're need gonna to, lose control yeah if, if you need to turn or stop well there's right. a problem that there's a, there's a problem for you <laughs> yeah i mean it's like oh the girl was worked at your work man yeah it, it's sad i saw that oh yeah um anyway apparently this 27 year old lady woman was driving and she lost control and started going all over the road and it crossed the center line she was hit by a truck going the other direction oh okay i'm glad that she didn't you know but i mean it sucks it, 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 yeah. it's like come on people you, yeah no doubt like, no doubt yeah. come, come monday which is when the, the big snow is supposed to come in uh they'll be not mm -hmm. here probably so much but in albuquerque uh, they'll be, it'll be all jammed up and. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, it happens every time it snows the first time. It's yeah. just, I and, don't and, know. And, and in San Diego, we just got it during rain, you know, and because people are yeah. idiots in the rain too. Um... <laughs> uh oh, did we drop? No, did we? Wait, I don't I, know. I, 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 no, I, it looks like we're still alive. So see, on know. my end anyway, which is unusual. No, everything's but... streaming fine here. I got the video, got the audio. Sometimes streaming. you gotta refresh, Donna. Vaughn TV is no Vaughn has Vaughn hasn't burp, burped at all yet. Yeah, for a while, not yet. today, but yeah, yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like you guys. No, she'll be back. I don't know, people. I was listening to the scanner, and and today was an interesting day for the little short time that I listened to it. Uh huh. And and I only listened to it for like. An hour, maybe two hours, maybe you know, hour and a half or two hours, and um, in the matter of that time, two people were busted for OWI. Ah, great. Yeah, it's like, and it was like twelve thirty or one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> well, at least they waited until afternoon. To <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the one guy, it was his third offense. Yeah. So it's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Why are you driving drunk still? Why are you an idiot? No, there was this one. There was no kids in there. They didn't say anything about kids. It was just, it was a guy that was like 52 years old or something. Uh -huh. But it's like, I don't get it. Huh. Weird. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so they took that one into custody, and I'm sure they took the other one into custody, too. I, like, turned it off after a while, but it's yeah. nuts, dude. I don't I don't know. I don't know either, man. It's really dumb, so. All right, well, we're going to kick off some jams here. All righty. And we shall return after these enjoyable audio ear sings. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a little band you may have heard of sometime in the past. It's they they, they go by the the name of Led Zeppelin. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love that band. That's Greta Van Fleet there. A uh, new one from them called My Way Soon. Uh, yes, it's going to be my way soon. Uh, so yeah, check out uh, wait, Waiting Around for the new uh, album, the full new album from Greta Van Fleet. But uh, that one's up there now on the YouTube's My Way Soon. Uh, prior to that was uh, 
uh, dueling banjos from the movie Deliverance with a lot of uh, the more graphic and um, harrowing scenes from the film. Uh, and it's uh, by Arthur Smith. That's that's the guy that wrote that song. Uh, Arthur Smith uh, wrote Dueling Banjos, in case you were ever wondering. Not that you'll know who he is or remember that name. And we kicked it off with Led Zeppelin doing How Many More Times. Ah, oh, what a great tune as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff, man. Good good rock and roll there for you all. Right, Moose? All right, I don't know where Moose is. Yes. <laughs> oh, she is this. What's that? I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> How'd you like that new Greta Van Fleet tune? That was good. Yeah, man. Good. Those guys, I, I dig those guys. They're a cool band. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> they look like 80s rockers. Yeah, yeah. Well, they sound like uh, 70s rockers, so. Yeah. <laughs> or 70s. Eight, 70s or 80s, whatever. Yeah. yeah the long just, hair, you know. Right, they're just kids, you know. They're, they're, they're just kids. They're all brothers. Yep. Um, sometimes, sometimes dad will sit in there with them. So. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, family band, the family band. All right, Donna. Right, and and by the way, <laughs> uh-huh. Donna. <laughs> I play. I I I I played the. Uh, I played. I played that uh, uh, dueling banjos for you since I I know I know you're missing Vinny and and that'll bring you closer to Vinny. Dueling banjos, <laughs> those, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> wow. Actually, I don't know if she's missing him or not, but <laughs> I saw this that when I was. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so wow. Um, yeah. What in the freaking world is going on? <laughs> um, I, I tell you, man. Uh, all this this crazy stuff going on. I know a bunch of people watched that stupid debate crap last night, and uh, yeah. have, have been paying attention to the elections and nonsense like that. It's like, wow. Um, and it, I'd like to say, what a relief it's going to be when it's over. But it's not going to be over when it's over. So, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and le- unless it's like a total wipeout one side or the other. Um, right. Uh, you know, there's going to be all kinds of nonsense going on about it. I just, and then, and then and people are paying attention on that rather than all of this tyranny going on. Yeah, it's never over, right? <laughs> yes, the mating call of the hellbilly species. Ag, exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Oh, but let me tell you about uh, let me tell you about a little tyranny going on. All right. A little tyranny happening in the schools. Well, not exactly in the schools, but connected to the schools because all right. since mo- so many aren't in schools now, they're doing it at home via computer. And yes. and apparently, uh, I think who was it? Rome's I think earlier this week said that um Ben, um, he, he sometimes he doesn't have the, the, the camera on or whatever, and, and, the, and the teachers will yell at him, turn that camera on! Uh, or I don't say yell at him, but they, they admonish him for not having his camera on. Um, <laughs> which is like, what, what the hell for? You don't need to see me. I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, taking your, getting your instruction. You don't need to see me here at all. Uh, but but apparently they well, think they 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 believe they do. But I came across this article posted up on uh, Vice. Mom said we had a short dropout. We do. Looks Where? Good now. Where? What? I don't know. Let me, let me take a look. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. I think it's fine. He's listening on audio, and the audio stream has solid been solid. So I don't. Oh, I, okay. I don't, yeah. Oh, I, I oh yeah. I forgot he's listening to audio. Yeah. So I don't know. All right. Which Never cool. mind then. I mean, it happens. It happens. So it does. It's live radio. Uh, a- anyway, <laughs> so yeah. so I so I came across this article on Vice, uh, the motherboard site there, um, 
students are rebelling against eye tracking exam surveillance tools. So they are tracking the eye and head movements of students through their webcams um, uh, via these schools. So uh, I, I, I can't even imagine. They're, they're tracking your eye movements and, and your head movements. I, anyway, invasive test-taking software has become mandatory in many places, and some companies are retaliating, retaliating against those who speak out, who speak out against it. So, uh, as, yeah, well, you're not allowed to do that. No, no, do not speak out. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a no, no. That's a bozo yeah. no, no. Uh, anyway, so as, as privacy minded computer science student, uh, preparing to start his first year at Miami University, Eric Johnson was concerned this fall when he learned that two of his professors would require him to use the digital proctoring software Proctorio for their classes. The software turns students' computers into powerful invigilators. Is that, is that the right word? Invigilator? Let me look at that word up. Invigorator? No, 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 no. Let's see. Let's see. Let's Invigilator? Let me let me see what the hell this word means. Invigilator. Right. Invigil pearl, <laughs> invigil there you go. Pearl form. Invigilator. Uh, one appointed to watch students start examination. Oh, okay. Okay, that, that's what an invigilator is. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay, so the computers are now the invigilators. Um, webcams monitor eye and head movements. Microphone, microphones record noise in the room, so they're recording whatever sounds are going on in your room. And algorithms log how long or how often a test taker moves their mouse, scrolls up and down a page, and pushes keys. They're tracking every single little thing going on wherever it is you're you're taking your test. Your your mouse movements, your head, your eye, uh how how long you're you're scrolling up and down, um what keys you're pushing. Uh, the software flags any behavior its algorithm de deems suspicious for later viewing by the class instructor. In the end, Johnson never had to use the Proctorio. Not long after he began airing his concerns on Twitter and posted a simple analysis of the software's code on Pastebin, he discovered that his IP address was banned from accessing the company services. They they found out who was who was doing it, and they, they cut his ass off. He also received a direct message from Proctorio's C CEO, Mike Olson, who demanded that he take the pastebin post down, according to the com a copy of the message uh, Johnson shared with Motherboard. Johnson refused to do so and is now waiting to see if Proctorio will, will follow up with more concrete legal action as it has done to other critics in recent weeks. If my professors weren't flexible, I'd be completely unable to take the exams, Johnson said. It's insane to think that the company or CEO can affect my academic career just for raising concerns. His case is just one example of how college campuses are revolting against the use of digital proctoring software and the aggressive tactics employed by proctoring companies in response to those efforts. In recent weeks, students have started online petitions calling for universities across the world to abandon the tools and faculty on some campuses like the University of California, Santa Barbara, have led similar campaigns arguing that universities should explore new forms of assessment rather than subjecting students to surveillance. We need to think really hard and long about how we're adapting, Jennifer Holt, a film and media studies professor at UCSB, told by the board. We're supposed to be protecting our students. Anyway, the article goes on, but uh, you, you can see all of the various um, suspicious things they consider suspicious activity and how they're doing this and how these companies don't want you to know what the hell they're doing, uh, all the all the evil things that they're doing. 
Uh, right. So, man, I, I tell you, this this is that's a nasty. That's that's beyond 1984 stuff right there. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. So uh, wow, I, I don't even want to say uh, re- really about that. Wow. Other than the fact that I'm glad I'm not in school at this point in time, because damn, I, 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 I would certainly rebel against uh, that type of thing as best as I possibly could. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I see you got an article here. Yes. Um, so apparently they someone appealed it, the new orders for businesses. Okay. That Evers issued. Right. Um, the Tavern League appealed um, because it says the Wisconsin Appeals Court has put a hold on Governor Tony Evers' restrictions on indoor public gatherings pending appeal. The ruling Friday from the 3rd District Court of Appeals is a setback to the Democratic governor's effort to control the coronavirus spread. It says he issued, Evers issued an order on October 6th limiting indoor public gatherings across the state to 25% of the building's capacity or 10 people in places without an occupancy limit. So it's looking like they're fighting back on this. Good. Hope they win. Yeah, me too. I mean, seriously, people are going to lose their livelihoods, you I, know? I know here in New Mexico there's been several lawsuits brought against the governor's orders, the health department's orders, and every time, every single time, uh, the Supreme Court of New Mexico, which is a total shill for the governor because they're all Democrats – there. Okay. Um yep. they just they just reject it out of hand. They they go they don't they don't really even look at it. Uh, you know. So the right. only, the only thing they could possibly do would be to take their their cases to the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh which at this point in time is kind of up in the air, right? Uh, <laughs> waiting waiting for that new appointment. Uh, over I there. don't know how, how that works, but um, yeah, yeah, because I mean, once it, once you've reached your the Supreme Court of your state, the only place to go is to the Supreme Court of the United States. Right, right. Uh, that I mean that's, that's the only move upwards. But since they're still dealing with this uh, four to four on the, the the liberals versus the conservatives, and they're waiting for the appointment or the uh, confirmation oh, okay. confirmation yeah, right, of right. Uh, Amy Barrett. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, I uh, so hopefully uh, in your state, they'll win. Now I know other states have, have the, the, they, the courts have said, go to hell governor, you're, you're, you're over the line. Uh, but here in New Mexico, that's, that's just not the way. So, um, right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Um, and uh, there is this one. I see you pasted the same uh, one UW in there. UW study. Can you hear me? Yeah, you pasted the same oh. link in there. Oh, shoot. Yeah. What the heck? I don't know. Sorry. Happens. Anyway, Please. is yeah. this... Uh, okay, so... Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, the University of Wisconsin did a study, and they concluded that high school sports have not spread the coronavirus. Good. So, there's that. And And... <laughs> And uh, will the uh, evil governor take that into consideration? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the study was done in Madison. He lives in fucking Madison. I'm sure he's going to see. He know he's aware of the study. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The thing is, they, I don't think they really care. I, I think all, no, all of the, I think all of the uh, the Democrat governors are working in concert. They all they're all going off of this, this, the same uh, you know script yeah. script on that kind of deal where. You lock down everybody as much as you can, at least uh, un, 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 until un, until the uh, the uh, election day goes by. Because <laughs> I think that's I think that's the uh, the main thing at this point is do everything to make it seem like the coronavirus is horrible and getting worse, and make right. it all and make all that seem like it's Trump's fault. I, I think that's where we're at at this point in time. Yeah, that's kind of the the tactic they're taking, it seems like. Right, right. And yeah. I watched, they, they did the high school volleyball. They're, they're doing high, or yeah, they're allowing the girls play high school volleyball. And 
I watched a clip the other day, and all the players are wearing fucking masks. While they're playing volleyball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is terrible. It's insane because that is crazy. I, I just, I just wonder how many of those, how many of those girls, uh, you know, they're gonna are, end up with bronchial infections. All or kinds something. of bad stuff. Yeah, after that. Yeah. Or, or some of them may, maybe pass out during the game because you know. Right. Um, it, I mean, um, you, you gotta be kidding me. Right. Right. Uh, well, uh, you you would think, but. Um, it's crazy. I, I, and, and 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 for those that think that no, no, this is all a natural thing. It's just happened. It's real. It's all the way it is. I have a story here for you. All right. From Wednesday, posted on IntelliHub dot com. Rothschild filed COVID nineteen test patent in two thousand fifteen ahead of the outbreak. Millions of test kits were sold in advance. Business oligarchs create COVID-19 scheme and get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. The diabolical lineage from both the Rockefeller family and the Rothschilds family may be implemented in what appears to be a vast, top-down, worldwide scandal that affects the health and freedom of most people on Earth. The Rockefeller Foundation, in conjunction with the World Bank Group and lineage of the Rothschild family, a bloodline may have orchestrated, rolled out, and may currently be conducting a worldwide live-action COVID-19 pandemic exercise, which has subsequently led to the announcement of so-called solutions, which have thus resulted in newly formed public health crisis bureaucracies, Public health crisis bureaucracies, wow. Uh, designed to further restrict human contact, human interaction, and human movement, not to mention the invasion of one's privacy through required and, in some cases, forced testing procedures, and it's all documented. Not only did the Rockefeller Foundation document their plan to take over the world governments and their populations through a pandemic, uh, uh, through a pandemic scenario dubbed, say it with me, lockstep. Yep. <laughs> As in Telehub's uh, Shepard Ambalas reported back in 2014, they telecasted in a white paper titled Scenarios for International Technology and Future Development. But it gets worse. Records from the Dutch Government Patent Registry website dated October 13th uh, 2015, five years before the COVID-19 outbreak, revealed that a man by the name of Richard A. Rothschild filed for a provisional patent for the system and method for testing COVID-19, COVID for COVID-19. To top it, and there's a, a image here of that exact patent. Um, uh, to top it all off, a scheme in which Internet Archive records of World Internet Trade Solution data show that millions of COVID-19 test kits were sold globally in 2017. Ah. They, they sold these test kits three years ago ahead of the outbreak, ahead of anybody knowing that this thing exists. Well, any, any, anybody that... <laughs> any real people, wow. uh, anybody outside of their group knowing that this thing even existed. Uh, and so, um, and, and they, there's a, there's a, a, a recording uh, of his uh, podcast that he did uh, talking about this here, uh, Shepard, oh, okay. Shepard Ambellis. Um, so, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's all natural. It, it, it came from a Chinese wet market. No, no, not so much. No, no not no. so much. Not buying it. No, 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 no. They've they've been planning this for a long time. We've been talking about lockstep for a while, um, and other people that were have been filing patents. Yeah, it's very convenient, uh, Java Doctor. Didn't see you come in. Howdy there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, I'm telling you, this thing is such a scam. It, 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 it is. It, it, it is the biggest hoax ever played on the entire world. It's yeah. not just like a hoax about, you know, a school shooting or a, or, or a 
hoax uh, about fires in California or uh, some other little hoax. No, this is this is a global freaking hoax, and it's monstrous, and it's at the very very top levels. These people that you don't get, ever get to see. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, new world order based on a very very old world order, Cowboy Tech. Um, this this stuff is evil. It's freaking evil. So, yeah, it is. And whether or not this virus even exists, I, I still question. Uh, and I'm always going to question because I, I just don't believe it. Um, uh, be, because of the way that they're, they're reporting it and the things that they're doing, uh, all they talk yeah. about is cases. They totally ignore the deaths now. Um, uh, for, for the most part, they report a bunch of deaths. But then as yeah. that was pointed out, that those, those deaths, all of those 200 and whatever, a thousand, yeah. uh, 200,000 odd uh, deaths. Most of those were actually flu, just regular old flu, which right. are the, the same flu numbers you would get every year, like 170,000 of those deaths yep. were flu. And the, and flu is now basically non-existent uh, because all of those flu deaths and flu illnesses are, are now attributed to the corona nonsense. Yeah. So... Um, uh, you know, and, know, and so many studies showing you the masks do nothing. They actually make it worse. Um, yep. I, 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 and, 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 and people, you know, they won't accept that. Uh, they, 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 they won't, um, no, they won't, they won't take that in. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> laughable oh if, if it wasn't so real i guess um, yeah <laughs> anyway speaking of it all being a hoax and a scam and a yeah terrible tyranny being foisted upon us david ike you know david ike right yes i do all right well david ike, well, i don't know him personally well, but no, i know no, who no, he no, is no 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 right yeah he's he's the <laughs> he's the, the queen's a lizard guy um, yeah <laughs> Which which she probably is. Which she probably is, and he will be me too. I mean, look at him. But he, he, he I don't know. Yeah, he, he looks kind of lizardish. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so from David Ike. <laughs> uh, shocking revelations about the virus from the CDC itself. A must read for confirmation of what I, not I, but the guy that posted this, uh, Richard Willett on David Ike's site, of what I've been saying since March. It's all a scam. Uh, and this is what I talked about last week is they can't even prove that there is a coronavirus. They, so how in the hell are they possibly even testing for it? Um, and, and this goes through and shows more of the proof of, of the articles that I talked about last week. But that we all know, uh, well, we don't all know, but I think a lot of us do understand uh, that, that this, this stuff is not. And people, now... I know people, and there are there are people here. Hey, Dan, uh, there are people here in the chat that say they know people that have had the, the corona. Uh, Java, mm -hmm. Java doctor himself, uh, has said, I think last night he was talking about some people that he knows. might have been his relatives um, that, that have the corona. Well, they've been told they have the corona, but do they? Do they? <laughs> right, I don't well, know. I, that's, that's the question. Do they actually have the corona, or are they just being told they have the corona? Because um, that's that's a, that's a tricky little widget wicket there, isn't it? Sticky wicket. Um, yeah. Tricky wicket, sticky wicket. Uh, and, and, and so, man, I I, uh, I don't know. But read that article uh, again. It 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 goes through a yeah. lot of the information that we talked about last week. Uh, here and and how I wound up uh, with uh, uh, the hashtag that got me kicked off of YouTube. Well, my video, not me, just, just that one video got kicked off of YouTube uh, because I put that hashtag in there. There is right. no virus, and they they didn't like that. They don't like that. No, they don't like that. No. <laughs> hey, Vinny! Oh man, uh, you missed it, Vinny. I, I played dueling banjos earlier. Yeah, you missed it. <laughs> Unless you were listening in. Uh, Darn anyway, you. Anyway, we're going to play some more music right now. Um, yep. <laughs> because uh, we're we're here. We're here in the low in the low end 
We all got low. Yeah, I, I just this year is just. Wow. I tell you, man, it's it's crazy, and, and, and uh, hopefully it gets better. But I don't now, know. now, now, I was listening to who was it? Somebody on Coast to Coast, uh, and they were talking about uh, what the hell was that person calling themselves? They were like a psychic astrologer. Some kind, of, oh. some kind of weird thing. Anyway, uh, they they said that uh, come the end of uh, December, uh, there's a certain alignment of the stars and planets and whatever. Okay. So the bad stuff ends at the end of December. I'm like, oh good. I good. hope so. I I hope to hell that's right. I hope so. <laughs> because it's insane. Oh, boy. So, anyway, yes, uh, while we're here sitting in this low zone of our mind and soul, um, mm-hmm. maybe not your soul so much. If, if you've if you got, nice, you got a nice, strong soul, you're all right. Uh, mm-hmm. But let's all try and follow along with his song here. Yep, that was uh, John Prine doing hello in there. A uh, Madam Girl request. Good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, before that, we had the Rolling Stones, also a Moose Girl request, with You Can't Always Get What You Want. And I don't know if any of you watching the video noticed, but uh, uh, there at the end of the video, they showed John John Lennon in the audience there. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off. I think that was another Moose. I think those were all Moose Girl requests. All, all right. right. Uh, higher Ground, uh, the playing for change there, the Stevie, the Stevie Wonder tune. Mm. Um, cool. So, yeah, keep on reaching. Keep on reaching for higher ground. Because uh, yep. this shit we're in right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a messed up situation. Totally, yeah. Totally, uh, totally. Yes, it is. Totally horse crap. And, and I, I don't really think they, they're going to change. I don't think they want to change. Um but whatever. As I think yeah. that once they got this, it was like, well, good for us, and uh, we we got we got the power now. All we had to do was scare everybody to think they were gonna die. You remember? You remember at the beginning of this pandemic crap nonsense? Um, quit that. Uh, you remember at the beginning of this uh, pandemic nonsense? Uh, they they were showing uh, photos from China uh, where people were just like falling dead in the street. Do you remember those? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You did. <laughs> oh, okay. Didn't mean to. Yeah. So they were they were they were showing these people dead in this just falling over dead in the middle of the street, and I, and I think that was part of the whole scam. I, I yeah, doubt, it was. I, I, I doubt that there was actually people falling dead. Ghostbusters. Shh, shut up. <laughs> give me <laughs> give me away here. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, so. So I, I mean, and so much of the stuff from the from early on, uh, yeah. w- wound up to be just total nonsense, you know. Yeah. And um, and and but they've used that still, and they're still using it to this day. Oh, to, yeah. get, to keep people freaked out over over just. Yeah. Oh man, I I, I don't even know what to say about it all. It's just. I you know, don't know. I, I that's what I'm saying. I, I I don't know what else we can say about it. Yeah. You know. I really don't. I, I, I don't know. I'm really amazed at a lot of things, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but... Right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean uh, they, they don't, I mean, they don't want us to know, that's for sure. Uh, like I said, anytime anybody brings up something that, that doesn't match the exact uh, agenda... That they're trying to push, they 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 quelch it, you know. Um, so yeah, well, yeah. And anyway, so uh, uh, another another article on the whole, you know, things the things a hoax deal, mm-hmm. and and I'll, I'll just post the link there in the chat. You guys can read it if you want. Uh, but it's uh, posted. Uh, uh, when the hell was this posted? I don't even. It's not even a date on this, is there? All right. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, it just it's titled "Does the 2019 Coronavirus Even Exist?" Um, uh, the, uh, originally in, posted on the infectiousmyth.com, 
But this is on the healthcoach1.com. So, uh, yeah, it's all a scam. It, it's just, it's just, they're just fucking us over uh, with this stuff. And, uh, yeah. And for, for people, <sighs> scientists are detecting the novel RNA in multiple patients with influenza air and pneumonia. Uh huh. Sure they are. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> sure they are. <laughs> Oh God, I, I, I don't know what to say about it. All. Yeah, I, I know, Grim. I, I'm. I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. I've just been binge watching movies or TV shows or something or documentaries or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Trying to keep your mind off the crap, right? Yeah, and it's it's like. Um, what else, you know, there's nothing going on. There's no social life. Right. Anymore. <laughs> you know, they're trying to kill live music venues. I mean. Well, and. Uh, and, and bars uh, and restaurants and, and. And here from the website called uh, Global Currency Reset dot com. <laughs> <laughs> is they they tell you the truth about the coming global currency reset. Now you can believe this or not. Um, mm-hmm. Hal spoke uh, last Friday or last uh, Sunday uh, about this and says, "Yeah, that's not really probably the way to look at it." But here it is. It's the website globalcurrencyresetfacts.com. dot com. Um, okay. It says there is more than one meaning that is attached to the phrase global currency reset. A standard definition would be a return to a global currency system that all nations would agree upon. The last time uh, nations gathered together to agree upon a new global currency system was in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. You all remember that? Or have read about that? So while World War II was still going on, leaders from nations around the world decided on a new global currency system. This led to the formation of of global organizations like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and GATT, Mm -hmm. which later became the WTO, the World Trade Organization. Uh, The world's allied nations agreed on a fixed currency rate, which was sort of based on a global gold standard. The U.S. dollar was the currency that the nations used to back their currency under this agreement. The reason for this was because the United States was in the possession of most of the world's gold supply at that time. No longer the case. Far from the case. China's got tons more gold than the United States. Anyway, (laughs) America benefited greatly from this new currency system, and the dollar made its way into the central banks around the world. In the time... uh, In time, we left the fixed-rate system. Richard Nixon stopped backing the U.S. dollar with gold globally in 1971. This was known as the Nixon shock. Today, all major currencies float on a global market. While some things have changed, we are still on the remnants of Bretton Woods. So, uh, system. Many central banks still have the dollar in the reserves, and it remains, today, in high demand. Today, maybe not tomorrow. After the 2008 global meltdown, many have speculated that we are going to return to another gold standard. Some believe that there will be another monetary system altogether. Many armchair economists, that would be me, uh, have emerged <laughs> have emerged to claim that some nations may even base their currency values on their resources. The, the claim is that all currencies will revalue based on the country's assets. This will cause gold and silver to skyrocket as people begin to see a hedge of protection from depleting currency values. The problem with that theory is there are many, many Uh, major obstacles to overcome. First, central banks around the world need to agree to this, and this would put major constraints on their monetary policies. Second, 
there would need to be a lot of cooperation with governments from all over the world in order to implement this new system or to return to an older system. Some nations would gain from this while others would lose. Third, nations would want to preserve their wealth while moving to a new system. If most of their wealth is in dollars, this will be a problem. Uh, fourth, global organizations like the IMF and the WTO and the World Bank are relics left over from Bretton Woods. They would fight to have a relevant role in the new system. So these same armchair economists predict that the dollar is going to collapse in a night. Why, do, why won't it? Why shouldn't it? Uh, they claim the whole global economy is going to come crashing down in a day. Again, uh -huh. why wouldn't it? Uh, this will force nations around the world to negotiate a new global currency system. Many cite the 2008 economic crisis as proof of a coming collapse. Others rewrite history and insert bad economic theories as proof. Today, the, the, global currency uh. re, the global currency reset has become a major conspiracy theory. I have my tinfoil hat on. Uh, that, that, that believes the, the dollar will crash. This theory proclaims that nations around the world will abandon the dollar. Why won't they? That, right. That, I mean, just look at the trillions and trillions that the United States is in debt. Why would you base your 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 econ economy on that? I don't know. As a result, people have started to prepare for a future dollar crash. They invest in precious metals. They buy foreign currencies. And many have become preppers. Hey, that's me too. And they stockpile food and other things. Uh, the conspiracy theory has become big business, as many people have made money selling several different types of items that relate to a belief in that in any minute, overnight dollar, uh, uh, overnight the, the dollar will collapse. Uh, this belief system has many converts, and it's cultic, cultic in nature. Part of the belief system has its origins in New Age philosophies while other parts of this belief system are tied into a biblical prophecy, which I don't know what prophecy that would be about the dollar collapsing, but... I don't know. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> some have it. As a result, new converts are made all the time, and people are driven more by emotion and their worldview rather than being driven by sound economic advice and principles. See, there's the problem. There's the problem. Uh, is what is, at this point in time, sound economic advice or principles. I mean, you look at the stock market, which should be at zero, uh, and, and it's, it's at record highs. Uh, and so right. I, I, how, what are good sound economic advice and principles? It's, it's, it's all fake, just like this freaking virus. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of articles and, and information on that website that you can look at, but um, they've, they've got some good information there, uh, mm -hmm. and you can pick and choose what you want to believe. If you're wearing uh, your tinfoil hat as I am, <laughs> then you're waiting, and we've been waiting for a long time yes. now for this, for this currency collapse. Before 2008, we were waiting for this collapse. Yes, uh, we were. <laughs> we knew it was coming. I smelled it coming. Thirteen years later. Uh, I, I smelled it coming in 2005, which is why I got the hell out of San Diego, out of California. Uh, right, and, and took you moved. The, I took the money and run at the peak of the bubble, uh, the housing yeah. bubble. Uh, so, Good uh, idea. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it, I know. <laughs> but but I mean, just like I said, just look at the freaking stock market and 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 understand that these companies. Yeah, you, you know it's got to be rigged. Oh, it's so uh, everything is so overvalued. It's not it's not based right. on profits and losses. Uh, no. pro profits to income. It's not, it's not based on anything real anymore. Uh, and I, I guess it was at some point. I mean, I, I used to trade stocks a little bit, not a whole lot, but enough to you know make a few dollars here and there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah, when, when that 2008 stuff rolled around, I still had uh, a pretty decent pile of stocks and I sold everything, everything, 
which I probably shouldn't have done. Yep. Uh, looking back, I probably shouldn't have done on some of my stocks like Netflix. I I could have made a freaking oh, mint. I could have made a mint on Netflix. Yeah, stock. they're in the shitter now, dude. I, I know, but over the last eight year, eight twelve years, right? I, I could I could have made a freaking mint huge, on know? that. Um, Nvidia stock. I had a bunch of that, and and I got dumped all of that. But I oh, did. I, wow, I, yeah. I, I did still make a lot, even though I sold it. You know. Um, right, right. <laughs> and, uh, some other companies too um, that that I that I'd sold off at that time, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I looked at looking at stuff. And I was like, you can't trust this. What's it? Ba- what are they basing the values of these companies? Well, exactly. How, how are people buying these stocks? And and it, it all comes down to fear and hope, pretty much. Um, as far as retail investors, which there's not a lot of us left, uh, which, right? Which that would be you or me if we bought stock, we'd be retail right. investors. Um, uh, but but the the institutional investors are the ones that are raking in the bucks. They're the ones that are setting the algorithms and have their yep. bot, their bots out there making these microsecond trades. Uh, yep. on, on, and they can make a trade off of a, a movement as small as a penny on a stock. Uh, they, they can they can profit hugely off of that because they have so much of right. whatever. And they, so they'll sell it, you know, when it, a stock goes up like a dollar or something, they'll, ooh, we'll sell a whole bunch. And then that stock will drop back down and then they'll buy back in. And, and and in right. the meantime, they've made a ton of money. Um, yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's all on behalf of these bankers, banksters. As it always had, it's been this way for so freaking long. And if people only did their research and learned history and learned why and how we got to this point, they'd figure it out. And they get it finally. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they don't already. want to know. They do not want to fucking know. They just want to poo poo it and say, oh no, that's not true. You're not right. You don't know what you're talking about. It's easier to do that well, than you, to actually research something. Well, you, you know who I'm, I'm going to feel bad for, to a degree anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Because the stock market will crash. I mean, the, I. I have no no doubt at all about that. It, it, it just can't be sustained and maintained at, at right. these artificially inflated levels. Yeah. All the people with 401ks. All right. those people are going to lose their freaking retirement. And, and, yep. and it is, just, it's just going to destroy people. And um, you, know, you, think, you think suicides have been increasing over this freaking virus? Wait till, wait till people start losing everything they've, they've saved their entire life. And a yeah. lot, a lot of people freaked out in 2008 because the stock yeah, market did. dropped, you know, heavily. But it, but it, you know, it's, oh boy, did it come rubbing, roar, roaring back after that? But, uh, whew, man, yeah, exactly, Rob. You might play it long, but you'll ne- and get lucky, but you'll never make it. You'll, you'll never be not one unless of the, you're a big player, right? And you're not, and you're not going to be. Because, right, you won't. None of us would be. Yeah, you, you don't have considered bi- a big player. You right. don't have billions of dollars, and yeah, unless you do. It's not even a millionaire's club. Oh no, it's no, not at all. Above that, well, way above, above that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have at least a billion. Yeah, and it's and, way above and, that. And, yeah, and probably many. A million billions. dollars ain't shit. Ugh. I'll take no. it though. It's, it's not shit, but I'll take it. Um. Well, I would take it, but I mean, come on. As far as uber uber rich, no, dude, I know, I know, I know, I know. A million dollars is not compared to these billionaires out there. A million dollars ain't nothing compared yeah, to some any, billionaires. Any of you billionaires out there listening in? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, that that uh, you know feel like you got too much money on your hands. Just you know, just just, just send a million my way. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, as you go to the uh, yeah, as you go to the grocery store uh, nowadays, you're probably noticing uh, uh, higher prices. Yeah. At your grocery store, and here's a slight little explanation from it on ZeroHedge.com um, from uh, oh, the 14th, which was uh, what a week and a half, two weeks ago. Soaring food costs send producer prices higher in September. So that's that's when the producer prices started jumping up last month, uh, and, and now they're there. So now you're seeing it more in your stores than you were last month because there's it, a little lag time going on there. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you know, a million's not enough, but I'll still take it. 
Um, yeah, ten would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> I've always, I've always uh, kind of shot for the idea of of somehow getting awarded ten million dollars from somehow, but you know, uh, but if it's only a million, I'll I'll survive. Um, <laughs> I'll survive. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so following, uh, and this was uh, like I said, the fourteenth. So yesterday would have been mm-hmm. the thirteenth which would have been the Tuesday of last week. So following yesterday's mixed bag for consumer prices, uh, used cars soaring, uh, rent, shelter s- the slowing, producer prices were expected to shift back into very modest inflation year over year in September. And after five straight months of deflation, and across the board, PPI uh, printed hotter than expected. But the PPI final demand rose 0.4% month over month, double uh, the, the 0.2% expected, uh, sending the PPI up. Uh, that's that's uh, producer price index, by the way, if you're wondering where PPI is. Uh, uh, 0.4% year over year against expectations on the 0.2% rise. So it's the first the first inflationary print since March, meaning this is the first time inflation's gone up according to their numbers, uh, since March. Now, we, we all know that other certain things that we go out and buy were, you know, through the roof. Uh, so the, they, those aren't included in the index, in the producer price index. Um, uh, you know, when I when I first started reading Zero Hedge, it's been a long time, 10 years at least. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was looking, because they, they use all these freaking acronyms. And yeah. I had no idea what they were talking about. I'm like, what the hell is, well, I don't understand any of this stuff because yeah. everything was based upon the acronyms they use. It was just crazy. Uh, anyway, so the food costs are the biggest incremental driver of the hotter than expected inflationary print, uh, rising 1.2% month over month. That's huge. 13.3% year over year. That's, that's a monster inflation right there. So, um, so, so there's uh, nothing to slow down the Fed's ongoing inflationary pressure pressure because the fed uh want wants to want inflation at this point uh they used to be kind of against wanting inflation and and saying they were doing what they could to prevent inflation although mostly what they were doing to prevent inflation was to was to shift around the the items on the consumer price index which is what they base inflation rate on um so if if some something went up uh, they would take it off the list, and if something went down, they'd put it on the list. Like um, iPods, I, I don't know what, what the hell is the thing they're selling these days, but um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but they would put so or, or just price of computers was dropping. It makes my head swim, dude. Uh, I, I, yeah, and I, and I, can't I you know I used to talk about it a lot. It. I, I used, can't do it. I used I, to I, talk I, about it, a lot of this stuff on the old RLM news show. Yeah, I don't really care because I'm not I, I'm not a player in the game. Yeah, well, no, in no. any way, shape, or form, uh, you know. And uh, nobody here at RLM is, and I just don't get it. I mean, it's like I get the whole inflation, inflation thing and the whole that part of it, but I don't, you know. It, once you start going in depth, I, I just kind of fucking zone out. <laughs> yeah. Like whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, I just it's, and, it's, and, and I think I think you know back like I said when I was doing the oil news, uh, I think I lost a lot of people in the first because I always did the economic stuff up front. Uh, yeah, you but, did. Yep. And, and and I think during that period it was like, uh, <laughs> I, I but but I you know to me and it still is to this day as I used to say back then that that the control of the people. But economic... so I know what kind of player I am in the game, Rob. I'm a fucking pawn. <laughs> yeah. I am that... not no big player. I don't fucking own a bank. Right, right. But anyway, as you I know, was saying... I don't own any stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a small little fucking speck, dude. Just <laughs> like you. Just like <laughs> all of us. Just like all of us. But anyway, as I was saying, as I, as I used to say back then, and I still believe to this day, and I Oops. don't think anybody's questioned me on it, uh, that the the way that they control all the people of the world is through economic means, um, and that goes also as well for this coronavirus crap is that, uh, which should be obvious as they shut down businesses left, right, and center, uh, right, and, right, and and prevent you from having an income 
or, or to burn through any savings that you might have had uh, so that they can control you. And with this yes. global reset, whether it comes in that, that form or not, I don't know. But um, I, I, I think um, it should be obvious to everybody that they're controlling you via these economic means because you don't have uh, the way to go out there and do things to change this um, – even right. if you weren't locked down, for those of you that may may or may not be, uh, I can't speak for people outside of mm -hmm. New Mexico because I only know what our crazy ass governor is doing. Um, right, right. <laughs> and and you know, investigating all fifty states or other countries around the world as to what their lockdowns are doing. That's that's just too much for my brain to comprehend. Um, <laughs> it's just, so uh, yeah, anyway. that's where I'm at. I can't. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it affects me on some. Oh, level, it affects but, you. Absolutely, it affects you. It affects you know, everybody. It, it's just not. But but what do we what do we yeah, have to do yeah. about it? What 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 do we really right, do? Right, right. I mean, all we can do is watch and 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 hope that somewhere down the line that whatever we've prepared for was the right thing. Um, right. Because we we just don't know that. We we don't no, know we that don't. at all. Uh, we don't. We don't know what the hell's coming with all this. We don't this know what's the what, what's the next thing they're gonna pull. We, right, we but they know. but we know they're gonna pull something, and because uh, they always do. Yeah, because they always do. I mean, uh, I, I, I get it. I get it. All right, we're gonna hear some more music. Yeah. All right, let's do that. <laughs> oh. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And, and I think I think I say I think I say, it's all just just a, a touch too much. <laughs> Thank you, Leo in Frog Leap. Yes, uh, that was uh, Leo Maraccioli with his band Frog Leap playing live in Germany there. Um, yeah, 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 doing uh, the Ghostbusters theme song. And uh, who are you going to call? <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghost. Uh, so uh, anyway, I, I played that song this week because next week is uh, our Halloween show. So throughout the week... Yes. Throughout the week, get your uh, get your Halloween requests in for the Halloween show. Yes, uh, we will we'll, we will appreciate that, and uh, we'll have a good time next Friday doing the Halloween stuff going on. Uh, before right. this, before that, we had a Busco request there, Eric Church, and uh, smoke a little smoke. Smoke a little smoke. Smoke a little smoke. Who you got to call? Oh, <laughs> 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 and we and we and we kicked it off there with ACDC back in the day with Bob Scott uh, doing. Touch too much. <sighs> yes. So, uh, this was the month of uh, Christopher Columbus Day. Right? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Anyway, like I said, I've been um, watching documentaries and so on and so forth, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, they have found a place in Newfoundland where there's evidence that the Vikings landed there. Right. And they landed there five centuries before Christopher Columbus touched North America. Sure. So let me just get to this. Okay, the Vikings originated in what is now Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. All those centuries before they became unified countries. Their homeland was overwhelmingly rural with almost no towns. The vast majority earned a meager living through agriculture or along the coast by fishing. Advances in shipping technology in the 7th and 8th centuries meant that boats were powered by sails rather than solely by oars. And these were then added to vessels made of over, overlapping planks, a.k.a. clinker-built, to create long ships, swift, shallow, drafted boats that could navigate coastal and inland waters and land on beaches. So they started this boat-building adventure endeavor, and they uh, were able to travel from... Denmark and Sweden and Norway to Greenland and to Iceland. Right. 
And, I mean, we're talking 1,300 miles. Okay. So that was no small feat back then. Sure. So these bullets had to have been made really well. But anyway, they found... Uh, get down to that part. Okay. Um, when they were in Iceland, that was the platform from which the Vikings launched their furthest flung explora- explorations. Mm-hmm. In 982, a fiery tempted chieftain, Eric the Red, who had already been exiled from Norway for his father's part in a homicide, was then exiled from Iceland for involvement in another murder. Right. <laughs> okay, so he had heard rumors of, rumors of land of the West and with a small group of companions sailed in search of it. What he found was beyond his wildest imaginings, only 300 kilometers west of Iceland, Greenland. Okay, so he went to Iceland and then to Greenland. Greenland is the world's largest island, and its south and southwest tip had fjords uh, and lush pastures that must have reminded Eric of his Scandinavian homeland. He returned back to Iceland, gathered 25 ships, and sailed to Greenland. Well, then his son was Leif Erikson, and Leif Erikson's actually the one that came to uh, Newfoundland, and they found this place called Lantz Meadow, Lantz Meadow or something like that. It's French. Okay. <laughs> On Newfoundland. But anyway, they recreated like a Viking settlement there. But then there is further down the coast, like in Martha's Vineyard area. They found a stone that has ruins ruins on it that has the name Leif Erikson on it. Okay. But it's under the water, and they're pretty sure it's, like, worn off now, you know. There's pictures of it, but they can't get to it because it's on No Man's Island. You know what that is? No. It's this island off the coast of the East Coast there where they the, the U.S. military bombed the fuck out of it. Ah. Uh-huh. So they, no one can get to it because it's all this undetonated bomb material laying out. Bombs, undetonated, laying on the beach and in the water all around this island. Great. It's in Chilmark, Massachusetts. Okay. Or it, it says New Jersey on this one. No Man's Island, New Jersey. I don't know. Anyway, um, look that up. <laughs> and why they bombed the, hell, bombed the hell out of it, I guess they were testing bombs. They bomb the shit out of everything all the time. Right. And now no one can get to it. I'm surprised. I mean, I made the comment in, a, in Clyde's show. I'm like, I can't. I, I'm surprised they don't, like, clean it up. They, but they don't, they it's don't, all this undetonated bombs. Yeah, they don't clean anything up. They just bomb the crap out of stuff and go to the next place. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that rock is lost, that part of history. But I do know that... He he made it to Minnesota. Yeah. Because and how how they got there, that's no one really knows the route they took. Okay. I mean, we're pretty sure they went south from Newfoundland to Massachusetts, right? By the right. Martha's Vineyard there. Right, right. But then they must have gone west at some point because ruin stones have been found in uh Oklahoma. Sure. And there's this huge one in Havener, Oklahoma. I mean, they named the town after it. Okay. And there's this huge rune stone that they put a a building around it now because they don't want it wrecked, you know, or vandalized or anything. Did they translate it? Uh, No, they have. I don't think they they might have, but I didn't. I didn't. um, The guy that the show I watched, he didn't translate it. It's like, what the hell, dude? Right, right. Anyway, it's this geologist that lives in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'll try to find a link for that. I could have translated it for him. Yeah. I could have. He's I, a geologist. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Probably. I. I, I, I I've. Uh, I've written a couple of rune casting programs. Oh, okay. And. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, they're still available up on the web. Uh, I don't know if they'll work on Windows 10. I, you know, this is. I think I wrote them back right. in back in the XP days. <laughs> so, I, I, but they they work fine on Windows Seven. Um, but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if they work on, uh, on on Windows Ten or not. Um, 
Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I think it's really interesting that, and, and the other thing of note mm-hmm. that I, when this documentary that I watched, yeah, they tried to bring it to the, or they called the Smithsonian for like advice on what to do or whatever. And the Smithsonian wrote the one lady back that found it when she was like 12. She found one, mm-hmm. a rune stone. Yeah. And she they she wrote them a letter because she did like a, um, you know how you cover up something in the paper and you trace it or whatever? Yeah. She did that, right? And sent that to them oh, okay. to try to get it like deciphered or translated, right? All right. So if, you, if, if you click that link right there, it'll take you okay. to... Uh, uh, my my the my old apps these are all really really old. Um, okay. Um, so I, I I don't know. Uh, like I said, they work on Windows Seven. I don't know if they work on Windows Ten, but uh, okay. I got a couple of rune casting programs. Oh, I in see there. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what they did, what the Smithsonian wrote back, because this is back like in the seventies or whatever, you know. Okay. And they said, no, just bring it to us, and we'll you know we'll keep it here. Yeah. And the the little girl's like, no, <laughs> you don't get my rune stone, dude. Yeah. You know, which was probably smart because the Smithsonian does not want the narrative or the history to change, right? Yeah, yeah. So they keep all this stuff hidden, the stuff that they don't want anyone to know about. Right. Like the fact that Christopher Columbus was on the shores of North America 500 years before Christopher Columbus was. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to know that. Yeah, no, they, they don't want... want us to know that. They don't want us to change the what's worked for them for this long. Exactly. But they're finding more and more proof now that there was even more. Uh, it, it, the timeline for humans or whatever goes back further than they thought. Okay. They're finding that, and I'm not going to list, I don't know, like, the specific, but this uh, Viking discovery is definite proof, dude. Yeah. But let me give you that article. I'll copy the article I was reading from. There you go. All right. Cool. So, I mean, but I already knew that pretty much because I did book reports on Leif Erikson and everything. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Of Leif, er- Leif Erikson? Yeah. Well, they weren't good people, dude. Well, Leif Erikson was certainly not a good person. No, I mean they were plunderers. Well, he 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 was a a Christian convert. Yes. And and he and he tried to to drive out all the old uh, yeah you know, all the old Odinism the uh, he 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 he, didn't, he wanted everybody to switch over to the Catholic Church pretty much. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't like him. I didn't like him for that reason. Um, mm-hmm. So. Um, well, he's exal- He's like a historical figure in Minnesota, I guess. Is what you, yeah. No. I, why, I know. I, why he is, I don't know, but he is. It, partly because, like, supposedly he discovered it or something. I don't know. He discovered it. I now. can't remember. I haven't been in. He didn't really. Well. The uh-huh. European, the first European to, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I discover it. it's not the well, right you word. Well, you know, because... the, the the Vikings were also in southern Florida, and they influenced the uh, Seminoles heavily. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, all, all throughout, you know, pretty much. The, I'm sure they were in other areas that we don't know about as well, but uh, through Canada and, 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 of course, up there in the northern climes where you are. Um, right. Because you know that was there where they were comfortable. So yeah, that's where they came from. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, you can find it, uh, find stuff throughout. Those no, I gotta do more research again because it's been so long since I've looked in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just wanted to talk about it. It's just a change of pace from what we've been talking about the last seven or eight months. Eight yeah, months. Sure, I know, sure. longer than that, right? Since January. Yeah. 26. We've been uh, talking about this. At least, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, if you look at the, uh, if you could make one of those uh, RuneCaster apps run, 
Yeah. Um, if you can, uh, you'll see the the images that are you that I use there, and that are photos. Oh, you have to. Oops. What did I do? I don't know. Oh my gosh! Hang on. All right. Anyway, the images that I that okay, I use, sorry. the images that I use in in those apps are of my own hand carved uh, runes that I made out out of uh, ash. Oh, okay. Uh, which is a wood, you know. Um, so yeah, I, yes. yeah. So I, I know, uh, I know a little. I know a little. <laughs> that's, good, that's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> I know a little. But, I did not know that. That's awesome. But runes and uh, the Norse, uh, what they call mythology. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, it was a different. T- it was like early on the in the history or whatever, dude. It was like. 982 or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that I'm justifying it. I'm just saying, it, you know, it's an right. ancient time. Yeah. It was an ancient time, like, you know. I, I just think it just, it, you know, by the Smithsonian not wanting to release the information, it just goes to show you, though, that they don't want us to really know you know, the truth of mm, that. Sure. No, absolutely. Just like with the alien thing. Although I think they want us to know the alien things. Now, I think they want to, they've been kind of, excuse me, getting it ready for that, us ready for that. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Because they're, well, they released, the military released that one video of the the showing the you know the the pilots were up and and they noticed this, these anomalies up there. We talked about it on Freakers. Well, uh, on the moon? No, no. They were fl- doing a mission or something, and they saw UFOs flying. Oh right, the the, the Tic Tac. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, we talked about Tic Tac. Yeah, and so they've been slowly releasing tidbits of information, I believe, purposely to, like, get us ready. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, here's something you probably didn't know about. Okay. The United States and seven friendly nations signed what is called the Artemis Accords to carve up the moon. But the satellite, the moon, is hard to reach. Without Russia's help, which apparently Russia's not one of those friendly uh, nations. So they they think the, the tyranny doesn't stop here on Earth. It goes out there to the moon, at least. And, of course, probably to Mars. But um, uh, the United States has signed a treaty with seven countries governing exploration and exploitation of the moon and its resources. Uh, while many signatories never have even landed there, Russia and China were perhaps unsurprisingly, not invited. <laughs> but but China's already up there on the moon, so uh, uh, they they, they got to have their say. I don't know if Russia's up there on the moon or not, but as far as I know, the Nazis are up there too. Uh, any, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's something else. <laughs> <laughs> the Artemis Accords proposed in May to set reasonable boundaries for the growing number of countries eager to stake a claim to Earth's only satellite have been officially unveiled on uh, this last Tuesday. In addition to the United States, uh, the signatory countries include Australia, Canada, Japan, Italy, the UK, Luxembourg, for some reason, uh, the UAE and Japan. Uh, Luxembourg, okay. Uh, uh, Subtitled, Principles for Cooperation in the Civil Exploration and Use of the Moon, Mars, Comets, and Asteroids, for peaceful purposes, and we know nothing the government uh, does is for peaceful purposes. Uh, this 18-page document uh, colors resolutely within the lines of the aging Outer Space Treaty, uh, which prevents any one country from staking a claim to the celestial body. The Accords carefully avoid any reference to Trump. Uh, <laughs> and his administration's muscle flexing new Space Force military division, officially launched in December uh, when he stated the aim of protecting American interests in space, the world's new war-fighting domain, in the words of the Trumpster. 
Uh, instead, the Artemis Accords are described as a means of ensuring the sustainable human exploration of the solar system. What we're trying to establish is norms of behavior that every nation can agree to, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine told reporters on Tuesday. Of course, they lie about everything. So, uh, Anyway, they they think they can go ahead and just mark up the moon, say this is... This is the uh, <laughs> U.S. part of the moon. You, Luxembourg, you get that crater over there. Uh, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> I, 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 it's insanity. Well, well, what the hell? Exactly, what the hell? What, what, what right. you, what, anyway, there's a whole lot more information in that article if you want to read through it. But, okay. Uh, um, wow. Yeah, and, and saying, oh, no, Russia's not allowed and China not allowed. But China's already up there. They already got, they already got stuff. And they're on the dark side of the moon. And they're up there, oh, yeah. they're, and they're doing experiments, they're growing plants. They're doing far more than oh. the U.S. Well, you don't ever hear about about what China's doing up there, do you? No, we don't hear anything no, about it. No, you don't hear nothing. You, most people don't even know that China's fucking up there on the moon already. And, um, no, and, I, and, I didn't and, know that. Well, we, we've talked about it here, but... Um, okay, never thought about it, really, though. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> So, We've anyway. been doing these shows for so long, Grim. I don't remember your freaking show, dude. Oh, I know, I know, but whatever. I mean, come on. I know I, we talk I about it. I mean, I, it's just like... I know, we talk about everything. We do. We talk about everything. We touch on everything. It's so much information. I can't retain it all. And and this here, uh, I, I don't. we haven't talked about this exact thing. It's been, what, 12 years or something we've been doing this show? Yeah, yeah, getting there. Uh, but uh, we haven't talked about this exact thing, but we've talked about similar things um the next story or that yeah, last yeah one? no the next story okay like i don't you don't we don't do any prep before the show so well you know i come on cold i i prep all week <laughs> you do but i don't yeah anyway here on the new york post this article comes um now i i i i if you think back through your years, your younger years, when you had roommates and such. Yeah. Who were your roommates? Were they males, females? Depends. F females? Both. Okay. Good. Good to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One in four singles had sex with their roommates during the lockdown. <laughs> So 25 percent okay. of the people out there with roommates had sex with their roommates. <laughs> so a surprising number of desperate singles managed to get lucky during the COVID lockdown without e without even getting off their couch. Maybe getting off on their couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Match Match dot com has released its tenth annual singles oh, in a singles in America survey revealing data on how unpartnered romantics have balanced their libidos among an ongoing global coronavirus pandemic. A quarter of those surveyed in August said they looked no further than their own roommates for a little pandemic hanky-panky. Uh, <laughs> for, for many, the virus has proved an unsurpassable obstacle to having sex. A large majority, 71 of the 5,000 surveyed, told Match that they didn't have sex with anyone during the pandemic, marking what may be the largest, longest dry spell in history. But Corona, <laughs> corona hasn't been bad in all terms of its impact on dating. A new reliance on technology has led many to find love during video dates. Yeah, I don't know if that's really love on a video date there, but whatever. Um, with 69% of respondents telling Match they would video date again, and 50% said they fell in love during their video 50%? date. 50%? 50%. Uh, so they fell in love. 50% of the 5,000. Via video dating during the pandemic. 50% uh, uh, of the 5,000 they surveyed wow. fell in love over a Zoom or whatever the hell they use. Wow. Um, well, two-thirds of the singles report they are eager to date offline <laughs> in <laughs> real time with Gen Z men, the most ready, according to Matthew. not worth study. it. The pandemic appears to have made people more respectful of their own time and more mindful about who they want to spend it with. 
The survey also That's found That's true. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, no doubt. The survey also found that users are less focused on physical attraction. Just uh, show me the show me one to get on with. Get it on with. Uh, yeah. Anybody. Uh, so more than a third, or thirty six percent of singles said they'd be more selective about who they date now. Among those using apps to date, 58% said they've shifted towards being more honest and upfront. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, with their potential yeah, partners. Right. And 63% said they are going to spend more time uh, getting to know their potential partners than they did it during pre-pandemic. So singles have also become more politically oriented in terms of who they're willing to date. So I guess lefties right. with le lefties with lefties, I guess, uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, see what uh, with seventy six percent prioritizing shared political beliefs and their with their partner, this represents an, a twenty five percent increase from singles who said as much in twenty seventeen. For fifty nine percent of singles, they include wanting to know that their date supports Black Lives Matter. Oh God. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, no, the, okay, okay. Just to make this clear, Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. But so is but, Antifa. But you gotta okay. consider you gotta consider the logic and mindset of the people doing this kind of online sex thing, or right, or, right, or, or, right. or screwing the roommate. Or, oh, God. Or, okay. Or, or whatever. I don't have a problem with sex. You don't have sex. No, no, no. no. Sex, yeah, sex is great. Sex is awesome. But, uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to, you know, start tying in your political beliefs and uh, your, your, you know, whatever, it, it's, 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 it's lunacy. Um, <laughs> so, whatever. I was getting a kick out of us tonight. Good. I'm glad. I, I was yeah, Donna, you know, I mean, I can see some advantages of the video dating thing, but eventually you're going to have to meet up, right? I mean... I guess if she's just like whacking off to a... To a I like, guess so. I, you know. All right, baby. Know. Take, it, take it off, baby. Talk, talk, I don't know. Talk I, dirty. I, talk dirty to me. <laughs> I just... I'm too old. I'm getting too old for this crap. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. It's like, fuck it. <laughs> I don't even care. You know, it's like, whatever. All right, we're going to play some more jams here. Oh, I was just going to say Match.com. Oh, yeah, I know. But whatever, they're the ones that did the survey, so. Yeah, it's their uh, ick. <laughs> anyway, all right, enjoy the set, people. We will be back. All right, this is a little thing called Rockabilly Meltdown. And uh, the artist is uh, Justin Johnson. All right, folks, that was a uh, Spencer Davis group. I kind of missed the ending there. <laughs> anyway, and that was a uh, midnight special uh, there, Spencer Davis group. Uh, apparently, um, Spencer died uh, this this previous Monday. So yes. uh, I, I was unaware of that. I, 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 yeah, I, really, I posted I really, it in the chat that day. Well, well I missed it. And I, I really yeah, like I really like Spencer Davis group. Good band, excellent stuff. Yeah. That was Moose Girl Request. Before that, a Cowboy Tech Request. Van Morrison giving you the truth there and a track called No More Lockdown. Ah, yeah. boy, that's, that's some great lyrics of that. And we kicked it off with uh, Justin Johnson uh, doing All I Could Do Is Cry from the uh, uh, thing he did, a Rockabilly Meltdown. It's a Wayne Walker cover. So, uh, hey, Justin, he can play that thing. Uh, he's, he's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, and he's the one I'm trying to win a guitar from, too, by the way. So, oh yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, he's got another. He's got another guitar out there for, for up yeah, for. Yeah, I signed up, or I did the the thing. Cool. So cool. if I win it, you'll get you. I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, you know, if you win it, that's that's a you know that's an expensive guitar, so you might want to. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I don't know, dude. I don't need a guitar. Well, I'd I'd love it, but yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> sell it or something? Well, yeah, I, I, like I said, that's that's probably a good couple thousand dollar guitar. Yeah, but I don't know. Ant version. What was that? Shut up! Quiet. What is that? Stop. <laughs> it's nothing you supposed anyway, to Anyway, Donna about. posted an interesting link. Mine north of all ancient copper mining in the UP of Michigan. 
It's an older article, but that doesn't matter. It still applies. It's okay. kind of interesting. Cool. Yeah. You know, anyway, there's a lot of good rock hunting and such in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So, it's kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, what else you got, Grim? I don't got. Hang on a minute. I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, I just, I mean, um, it, yeah, it, it, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. These are interesting, yeah, interesting couple of, less than two weeks now. Till November 3rd. Oh, this, this one's gone, huh? What? Uh, article, something? Yeah, no, an article that I had here. Um, oh. Not even sure what it was for. Okay. No, I mean, it was some kind of space related article, but, but the article's not there. And, hmm. uh, and so it says, oops, that page can't be found. Looks like nothing was found at that location. So I, I don't know. Yeah, from the, uh, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I can't give you that one. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's all right. I'm almost all right. done. Well, we get, I'm not almost done, but. Yeah. No, um, okay, I got this one here. Let me get rid okay. of that. Let me clear that out so I can put this one in here. Okay, um, from Mises Institute. Now, tell me if you're going, well, no shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> police officers threatened to quit if the public keeps demanding accountability. Oh, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> what? You want us to be accountable? All right, so, uh, <laughs> so, so <laughs> it says, uh, faced with the armed assailant of the Parkland School shootings in 2018, Sheriff's Deputy John Stambaugh, Josh Stambaugh uh, ran away and hid while children were gunned down. He was later fired for his lack of action, but last month arbitrators ruled that Stambaugh must be rehired by the Sheriff's Department, and he will likely receive more than $100,000 in back pay. In 2018, at the time of his firing, Stambaugh earned $152,000 in base pay and overtime. It looks like he'll soon be back on the payroll, protecting and serving, uh, running away from danger. Uh, uh, okay, so when faced with unarmed suspects, however, some police officers are quite a bit more enthusiastic. For example, when Mesa, Arizona officer Philip Brailsford gunned down a crawling, sobbing, unarmed man in the hotel hallway, he paid no price beyond losing his job. He was acquitted in the shooting and was soon thereafter after rehired by the police department so he could claim a $31,000 a year uh, pension for life. It's cases like these which help explain growing popularity of police reform efforts in recent years. Now this is what all this police reform shit should be about, is not, uh, not allowing these assholes to get away with the shit they get away with. Uh, yeah. The, the public is becoming increasingly aware of the fact that police do not face sanctions for doing nothing to protect the public from violence. Indeed, it's even a well-established legal principle in this country that police are under no obligation to protect the taxpayers. Meanwhile, police open fire on unarmed members of the public of, uh, public. Officers frequently walk free, and some continue to get paid. Most continue to get paid. Uh, some of this re is a result of aggressive police unions, which make it extremely difficult to fire a law enforcement officer like Stambaugh. State laws have also been enacted to protect police from any personal liability far above and beyond what is enjoyed by any worker in the private sector. In short... The deck has long been stacked in favor of both police agencies and individual police officers. Uh, in response to incidents like those involving Stambaugh and Brailsford uh, and countless, countless similar cases, Colorado in 2020 passed new police reform measures. The legislation is designed to end police immunity in some cases, to mandate the use of body cameras, limit when an officer can 
shoot a fleeing suspect and rein in police unions. As they've noted here at Mises.org, uh, .org, uh, many of these reforms should have been enacted long ago. They should have, they, they should have always been in place. Uh, but many police officers are apparently less than yep. thrilled. Yeah, imagine that. Police officers are less than yeah. thrilled with these reforms. And police agencies are claiming they've been unfairly targeted. You talk about unfairly targeting, shooting all these innocent people, uh, while yeah. warning the public that few people will now want to become law enforcement officers. Well, if you don't have the gung-ho crazy bastards out there uh, shooting people, then good. That's good. Uh, we don't want them to be cops. They're they're terrible. They're horrible. They're murderers. Anyway, in August, for example, the Denver Post reported that more than 200 law enforcement officers in the state had retired or resigned since the new police reform law had passed. Good! Get them out of there! It was strongly implied that much of this was a result of the law's passage. Uh, the Post article contends that many law enforcement officers are quitting especially because they object to potentially being held responsible or personally liable for misconduct. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> uh, the, the state's reform allows for officers to be sued personally and held liable for 5% of any judgment or settlement against them, or 25000 whichever is less. Uh, I don't want my, myself and my family at risk. One police officer, uh, a veteran who's enjoyed taxpayer-funded paycheck for 30 years, complained, well, if you don't want them at risk, quit shooting people. Uh, a sheriff's deputy claimed uh, police officers are leaving because unfairly targeted, unfairly targeted by politics and lamented, who wants to be a cop anymore? Hopefully nobody. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, the Durango Herald, a paper in southern Colorado, reports that Police say the new accountability law is too much for them because they love shooting people. Uh, there is unlikely to be a shortage of police due to uh, due to too much accountability. Uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> wow. Fuck you, pigs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be held liable for shooting innocent people or d doing all kinds of other nasty shit that you do to people. Just fucked right the hell off. Um, I, I, we, we don't we don't need you murdering bastards out there. Uh, hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. All right. Well, I, I think that, I, I think I think I think that's good enough. Um, for, okay. For, for for stories, I got a couple songs yeah. here. Uh, All right. That will do. And. Um, Y'all can sing along with this first one if you know the words. Okay. It's an old uh, kind of southern country, uh, I don't know how you would put it, rockabilly maybe. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll have to decide for yourself how you would put it. But uh, sing along if you know the words. Maybe you know the girl. <laughs> it's not a girl singing, it's Tony Joe White. <laughs> Which may tell you a lot of a lot of you to know who what the song is. There you go. Oh, Black Betty, yeah. <laughs> all right, that was uh, Ram Jam doing uh, Black Betty. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You all know that version, right? Anyway, before that we had uh, Grace Potter uh, covering the Rolling Stones' "Dead Flowers." Moose girl request. Thank you, Moose. And we kicked it off there with Tony Joe White and Poke Salad Annie. <laughs> uh, I dig that tune. I don't know why I always dig that tune. But, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. <laughs> oh, yep. Boy. So, uh, yeah. Um, well, uh, what do we got tomorrow? Tomorrow we got the Dark Table with Flash and Grammy at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then on Sunday we got the Blues with me. And uh, the trivia here in the chat. Yep. So, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's on. And then at, right after me at 3 p.m. Eastern is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed opening up the big old can of whoop ass. Uh, b -b -b Monday I'll be on with Circle at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern with. Yep. It's all connected. <laughs> it is though. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, we we uh, well, there will be no more flash on Tuesday. 
He has decided to retire in a perfect world. So you only get two, two, count them, doses of Flash per week now. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, and uh, so, so uh, yeah. So there's that, and uh, da, 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 da. yeah, and there's oh yeah. Then you get the uh, dropping a coil on Thursday with Flash and Rob and Larry. It's a great show, by the way. Tune into that. All kinds of good information you probably don't have uh, in dropping your, the dropping a coil program. And uh, then there's Friday, and it's us. That's that's all we yeah. got right now. We we need more. We need more. We need more shows. But I'm cool with it as it is because it's less work for me. <laughs> right, um, there is that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I guess that's it. You yeah. got anything else? No, I no. don't. Just everyone have a good week. Hang in there. Yeah, have a great weekend and um, party on, Wayne. Yeah, Garth. Yeah, all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be we'll be back. Uh, oh, oh just, let me, just let me mention one more time. Next Friday is the Halloween show. Get your right. Hall- get your Halloween requests in throughout the week. And Usually uh, a good time. Yeah, it's a good party. It's it's fun. It's good. It's cool. Um, so uh, yeah, get some Halloween requests in if you desire. To. Right. Uh, not if you don't, and make sure they're good quality. And uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're done here. Peace. Peace.